Number one says, the diagram is a straight edge and compass construction of a line perpendicular to AB that passes through point C. So here's your perpendicular line that passes through AB and it passes at point C. Explain why it's helpful to construct points D and A. So let me get those marked on here. So why, if we're starting at this line with C on it, is it helpful to find D and A to be the same distance away from C? So when you're starting a construction, so let me draw out what this would look like before we did it. So we would have just had a line, okay? And then we would have had point C on this line. So and if you remember, we drew a circle uh, centered at C so that we could find those points A and D that are the same distance away from C. So why is that helpful? And um, that's helpful because then, and let me just type this out as I'm saying it. Because um, then we would know that C is the midpoint since it's equidistant from A and B. So C is the mid, sorry, A and D. So C is the midpoint of segment AD. So then we can um, construct the perpendicular bisector that we've done in previous lessons, which would guarantee, whoops, that the line created is perpendicular to um, the original line, so to line CB, perpendicular to the line through point C. The perpendicular bisector is perpendicular through the midpoint. So we just found two points to make sure that they are equidistant from C, so that C is forced to be the midpoint, then we did the perpendicular bisector construction. Number two in this diagram um, is the straight edge and compass constructions. Select all true statements. So this one is the construction of the angle bisector, if you remember. So let's take a look here. So it says line EF, so here is line EF, it's this line. <clears throat> so is line EF the angle bisector of BAC? Yes, it is. Um, if you remember, we just constructed that in lesson five. Line EF is the, so the same line, is this line the perpendicular bisector of, so is it the perpendicular bisector of this segment? So it would have to hit this segment at a 90 degree angle through the midpoint. So that would be like right there. So this is definitely not the perpendicular bisector of AB. Um, is that line EF the perpendicular bisector of AC? Again, no, the, the midpoint would be somewhere about here and go this way. So that is not true. Is EF the perpendicular bisector of BD? That is true. And then is EF, again, this orange line, is it parallel to AC? Remember, parallel means two lines that never intersect. So since CD does intersect EF here at A, these would not be parallel lines. Number three, this diagram is a straight edge and compass construction. Again, A is the center of one circle, B is the center of the other. A rhombus is a quadrilateral whoops, with um, four congruent sides. So explain why A, C, B, D, so this um, quadrilateral here is a rhombus. So how do we know essentially that um, all of those sides are the same length. So we know that each of the sides of ACBD are radii of congruent circles. So they are congruent. 
Um, and you might want to add in how you know that the circles are congruent. So I'm just stating that they're congruent right here. But you could also add in how you know um, both circles are congruent because they have they both have a b as a radius. Okay, so both circles have a radius length of a b, which means that they have to be the same because their radii are the same. Number four, a b and c are centers of the three circles. Which line segment is congruent to h f? So which one here? is congruent to HF. So is it, let me see what I have here. So is it AB? And that's not true. So AB is just a radius. HF is a diameter. It goes all the way across the circle through one of the centers. Um, is it CD? So CD is just a chord. It doesn't actually go through the center of a circle. So it's not a diameter. So it's not CD. Um, DF, so DF does go from the edge of one circle, from the edge of a circle to the other edge, and it goes through point B. So DF is a diameter as well. So DF and HF are congruent to each other. And then we can just check CB would be a radius, not congruent. Number five, in, con in the construction, A is the center of one circle, B is the center of the other. So essentially those two circles are equal. Explain why um, segment EA is the same length as BC. So if we look there, um, we see that they are both radii. So both are radii of congruent circles. So if we look, this goes from A to the edge, so center to edge. This one goes from center to edge as well, B to C, and the circles are the same size. So radii in congruent circles are going to be congruent to each other. Number six in this diagram, the line segment CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. So CD is bisecting AB, so I like to split that, put the little tick marks, and then you see the 90 degree angle. So assume the conjecture that the set of points equidistant from A and B is the perpendicular bisector. So everything, let me draw this line on here. So everything on this blue line is the same distance from A. Any point on this line is the same distance from A as it is from B. So is point M closer to A? Is M closer to B or is it the same distance from each? Whoops. So here is point M. So is M closer to A, closer to B, or the same distance? So M's the midpoint. So it's the same distance. All right, number seven. A sheet of paper with um, points A and B is folded so that A lands on B. Um, explain why the crease on the sheet of paper. So let me just kind of draw this crease. Okay, so we're gonna get this crease on the sheet of paper. Explain why the crease on the sheet of paper is the perpendicular bisector. So if we think about this, I'm just gonna draw this out a little bit more here. So I'm gonna draw the other edges of the paper as we fold it. So I'm gonna fold um, A over onto B. So if you can imagine this paper just folding over. I'm going to move it a little so it goes through. All right, so if we, whoops. So if we had folded this piece of paper over um, so that point A landed right on point B. So now if you imagine this flipped right over, so now A is landed on B. And then here's the um, paper. And why don't I even get rid of A here so we can't even see it. So we're going to fold it over. So it folded over right there on top of B. So now as it's folded over, we could just draw a point here, okay, a point anywhere on this fold, and I'll just call it C. And we could connect that point 
to A and B at the same time. So it's simultaneously on both of these points because this is still folded. So this is the exact same segment. And so that means that the segment CB is equal to the segment CA. So if you can then think of unfolding this paper, so we could unfold the paper back out so that A is back. And then we would also have um, this line segment here that we drew. And so knowing that these two segments are equal, so C is equidistant from A as it is from B now, that means C lies on this perpendicular bisector. And that point C, we could have done that anywhere along here. So that C could have been here and the same thing would hold true here. So all of these points lie on that perpendicular bisector. Number eight um, is another straight edge and compass construction. C is the center of one circle. B is the center of another. And we can see that they aren't the same size because the circle B does not go all the way through C. <clears throat> so explain why the length of CB is the same as CD. So how is CB the same as CD? Hopefully you can see um, that those are both on this circle. So they are both radii of circle C. And so if you're a radius in the same circle, that means you're congruent. All the radii in the same circle are always congruent to one another. 